Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler. This time we have something kind of special to show you. Um, if you think back to relatively recently, we had a chance to finally see that UK VHS of Revenge of the Sith. And it helped illustrate the point about how in the United States there wasn't a VHS release, so you couldn't get a full VHS set of the prequels, and I had never added a VHS from the UK to my collection, and Ricky Ray sent one over from the UK, which allowed me to be able to put it in the collection and feature it on the show. Well, I didn't think we were starting a trend there or anything, but I guess so. I've uh, been very fortunate very recently to have been contacted by a gent over in the UK, named Julian Smith, and Julian made an astounding offer and then followed through with it very recently once I finally moved into the new house here and everything to send over the Force Awakens releases from the UK so we could feature those unusual variants over here because, hey, I'm an Indiana guy, then a Georgia guy, I'm a U.S. guy, even wearing my old college Evansville Aces t-shirt today. Uh, I don't do a lot of global traveling, and by don't do a lot of, I mean zero. I haven't done it at all. So getting my hands on these types of releases is something that usually is not something I even really consider, because it's just not something within my frame of reference most of the time. And to have a chance like this to look at something from the UK and get the perspective of someone over in the UK for whom these are their primary releases was a fascinating thing I didn't want to pass up. So, we have a chance here, thanks to Julian over in the UK, to check out the DVD and Blu-ray releases of The Force Awakens from across the pond, so to speak. So, let's start with the DVDs. You may recall that in the US, this was our DVD release of The Force Awakens. Kind of a basic poster cover, DVD up at the top, back, gave us our UPC symbol, information about what's in it, characters, tech specs, uh, languages and whatnot. The cast and crew info, all that legalese down at the bottom, it is PG-13 by the MPAA in the U.S. And then, of course, we had a digital copy sheet, and we have the DVD itself with this particular artwork. Now, this is Region 1, which means basically the U.S. and the bulk of the Western Hemisphere. In the U.K., they are Region 2, and this is the Region 2 DVD release of The Force Awakens. Very similar in that, according to Julian, this is a bare-bones release as far as features go, essentially just the film. You notice here that there's no DVD listing there up at the top, so the art can be a little bit bigger. And we do have our ratings down here. Uh, the UK rating of 12 and the Irish rating of 12. Little DVD symbol here down at the bottom. You also note a slight difference in the spines. In the case of the UK version, you have a sort of a model issue here with Lucasfilm up at the top with the ratings and then DVD down at the bottom, whereas in the US, you have no uh, edition number except down here at the very, very bottom. Lucasfilm is at the bottom, DVD up at the top. The Lucasfilm and DVD essentially just swap places between the two regions of packaging here. As for the back, there is a difference here, as you can see. The text about the film is still the same, but up at the top on the UK version, it says the highest grossing film of all time in the UK and Ireland, and then has the five star ratings from the Mail on Sunday, the Guardian, the Telegraph, and the Times. Then underneath, instead of that red bar that has your text specs and everything, you have your cast and crew information that's underneath the red with the text specs on the US one, and then the text specs are more like on the prequels in that black and gold set of boxes down there. And then, of course, the UPC has been moved to the bottom rather than up here at the top, and you have your two rating items, where the UK one says, rating 12, moderate violence and threat. Threat gets taken seriously. Uh, suitable only for persons 12 years and over, not to be supplied to any person below that age. So, if you, like, slip this to an 11-year-old, you're an asshole. Uh, then we have... Uh, 12 from the film center's office, the Irish one, says fit for viewing by persons aged 12 years or more. Nice. Now, as for the inside, similar disc, DVD Lucasfilm, but it does, again, have those rating symbols on there that are unique to those territories. And, of course, I can't actually play this to say, hey, let's see what the content is. 
I'll take his word for it. It's essentially what we got with the U.S. version, very bare bones, because DVD isn't really being pushed right now. But in the case of DVD, remember, Region 1, Region 2, that makes a difference in terms of whether or not you can play it in the U.S. or in the U.K. Region 1 plays over here, but not 2. Flip it around, Region 2 will play over there, but not 1. They are region locked. I would also note here one big difference that's also going to affect the Blu-rays, and that is languages. In the United States, we kind of take for granted the fact that most people are going to speak English, right? You have all these different people coming from around the world, a mixture, we are a melting pot, as we like to call ourselves, lots of different languages spoken in small little amounts, but when it comes to the primary language, English. And okay, well, on home video releases, we'll also include Spanish, because that's a very a fast-growing language in the United States, and we'll also include French, because we've got some people here who speak French, but also our Canadian brothers and sisters up north, well, there's French speakers in Canada. So, hey, French, Spanish, English, those are our primary languages to put on DVD and Blu-ray releases these days. In fact, you can look on the back and find that the U.S. release has English, French, and Spanish 5.1 Dolby Digital, with English 2.0 descriptive audio language tracks. In other words, if you want to watch the film, you can watch it in English, French, or Spanish. Note that is Latin American Spanish, not Iberian Peninsula Spanish. Okay, Latin American Spanish. And you could also listen with that descriptive English audio uh, for those who are hard of hearing. And then we, of course, have subtitles. And in this case, the subtitles are Spanish, French, and English, English uh, for the hearing impaired. You might be saying, now, wait a second here. I didn't hear any Portuguese. And Brazil is in the Western Hemisphere. Okay, I oversimplified it a little bit. Region 1, it, when it comes to English speaking or English audio tracks and whatnot, the English speaking world, yes, Region 1 is the Western Hemisphere's English speakers. But Region 1 is actually the U.S., Canada, and the U.S. territories. Region 4 is Latin America, which is where you'd find Portuguese subtitles. So it's not that odd that Portuguese isn't on here, uh, but keep in mind that even though it is Latin American Spanish, this is not necessarily aimed at a Latin American audience. It is aimed at American audiences or Canadian audiences of people for whom Spanish is their first language. And hey, as a teacher, I just love the fact that you could listen to this in Spanish if you're trying to learn Spanish or you're perhaps teaching Spanish and trying to uh, give them clips of Spanish speaking in an American classroom. But I digress a little bit. Meanwhile, the UK DVD for spoken languages has Dolby Digital 5.1 for English, Castilian Spanish, Catalan Spanish, although I'm told that Catalan isn't really Spanish per se, but it's spoken in part of Spain. Uh, I know little to nothing about Spanish. And then we have Dolby 2.0 Audio Descripted English. Okay, for subtitles, we then have subtitles for English for the Hearing Impaired, Danish, Finnish, Icelandic, Norwegian, Portuguese, Castilian Spanish, and Swedish. So lots more options, which makes sense for a product that's being released in Europe, where many different languages are both spoken and read. That brings us to the Blu-rays. In the United States, this was our primary release on Blu-ray. It was a Blu-ray DVD digital HD combo pack with this packaging here. And inside, there's sort of a standardized look here. Black Blu-ray case, Blu-ray DVD digital HD, similar back. You pop it open, you have your code for a digital copy. You have your Millennium Falcon Beats the TIE Fighters here as your film disc. You then have a bonus disc there. That's basically them sitting around doing the table read or the, uh, the initial meeting. And then you've got your DVD, which is identical to the one that's in the single release. If you went to Walmart, you could get this one. This one has the same insides for the most part. But you have the Blu-ray DVD HD combo pack here. You have that opening Velcro thing with BB-8. Similar back. You open that sucker up. Again, the contents are essentially the same. But you get the little coin. I know it's called a disc, but that confuses the hell out of people. So I'm going to call it a coin. At least I'm not calling it what I'd like to call it, which is crap. If you went to Target, you could get this one. Again, in that weird cardboard packaging here. The one that folds out, 
and everything. It has the discs all slipped inside. We looked at this, of course, when we looked at the Force Awakens U.S. releases. That's also the one that in redeeming the digital copy, you're going to get those Target exclusive bonus features. And then, of course, at Best Buy, you get the Steelbook. More on Steelbooks in our next episode. Again, it's not quite the style of the previous Steelbook. We got our digital code and same discs once again. Now, interestingly, in the UK, you don't see digital copies with movies sold quite as often as a pack-in. You also don't see combo packs as often. So it may be surprising, but the norm across the pond, but when Star Wars The Force Awakens was released in the UK on the 18th of April, yes, they got it later than we did, which is kind of asinine in and of itself. They got their own releases, but they were not DVD, Blu-ray, HD combo packs, and none of them, as you notice there hopefully with the DVD, had any digital codes whatsoever. Digital codes were not present in any of the UK releases of The Force Awakens. You want it digital? Buy it separately digital, damn it. That brings us to a pair of releases from the UK. The light side and the dark side. Let's check out the light side here first, so that, of course, we're able to tag these appropriately down at the bottom and such. So this is a primary release of The Force Awakens from the UK. It's got this white cover and embossed cool feeling here to the logo. By comparison, by the way, that embossing is this same logo from the standard US one, except it is a little bit smaller on the UK version to make more room. You have your Blu-ray symbol down at the bottom. You have your ratings down here at the bottom as well. Up in the corner here, in a little hexagon there, it says, limited edition sleeve, choose the light side, two-disc Blu-ray. And it has a little number there uh, for the item number. Yes, a two-disc Blu-ray. No DVD, no digital code, just the film and bonus disc Blu-rays. That said, though, there is some truth in advertising here that we didn't get in the United States. Limited edition sleeve. Well, okay. What does that mean? Well, got the nice little cover here. We have our information on the back set up here with about the film and the little thing of characters there, the cast list, and then our box with all the specs and our ratings and everything down at the bottom. The sides, by the way, I love on these. They look much cooler on the shelf than the U.S. ones. This one's got the blue lightsaber running through it. We'll see a red lightsaber running through the one for the dark side. The other side has Blu-ray, Lucasfilm, uh, item number, ratings, and a little hole here where you also have the hole in the Blu-ray case to open it. Although you can't open it here, you'd rip the thing open. And you slip off the limited edition sleeve, and you have sort of a standardized Blu-ray case underneath. Very similar to the U.S. one here. Um, no format noting at the top. Blu-ray is down at the bottom. There's your ratings, very much like on the DVD side. Blu-ray, Lucasfilm, Star Wars The Force Awakens, and your pair of ratings. Back, basically what we got on the slip cover there. But notice a blue Blu-ray case, not a black one. Pop it open. Okay, no need to worry about the little sheet for a digital copy falling out because they don't have them with these releases. Then you've got your actual discs. You have the film, similar disc to the U.S., different ratings. They've kind of moved around the little logos. And then you got the one for the bonus features again with little rating logos and whatnot up there. So similar to the U.S. release once you actually get inside. But again, truth in advertising, because it's telling you it's just an exclusive sleeve. It's just this special white and blue cover that goes over a standard case. For many in the United States, there was a lot of, ooh, oh, okay. Ooh, an exclusive BB-8 cover, ooh. Son of a bitch! kind of reactions when they realized that the BB-8 cover was also just an exclusive sleeve with no indication that it's an exclusive sleeve. Instead, it just says exclusive packaging, which is true, but kind of misleading. That brings us to the UK companion to that one. 
the dark side. A little more similar to the US one because ours happened to be black in the background, but just a straight black background. This is not a star field. Again, the embossed logo. Again, ratings at the bottom. Blu-ray in the corner. And up here, a gold hexagon that says something similar. Says limited edition sleeve. Again, truth in advertising. Choose the dark side. Two disc Blu-ray. I do find it interesting on both of these. Put these side by side. Notice that light side and dark side are one word. Okay, whatever. Kind of like a lightsaber, I suppose. You go to the side. The one side, again, similar logos with a little hole for the case there. Back side, identical to the other. Side, again, very cool looking Kylo Ren's lightsaber there along the side going across the title. By comparison, here they are with the UK ones on the bottom and the US ones on the top. The UK ones are definitely cooler looking. And then when you open it up, again, standardized packaging, just like the other one. It is just an exclusive sleeve, interior contents, identical. Now initially, actually, both Julian and I thought that these were probably just identical pressings of the same disc. Though I started to wonder when I was looking at those DVDs and noticed on the packaging the differences in languages and thought maybe there'd be some difference to be found there. And it turns out that the answer is kind of yes and no. If you check out the bonus disc, the bonus disc is identical to the U.S. version. Absolutely identical. Even down to an American FBI warning not to copy the thing. Yes, yes, because the FBI can work wherever it wants, or perhaps thinks that it can. I would imagine there's some jurisdictional stuff that would stop that from happening. So on the bonus disc, you have the option for really just one audio language. But if you go to the subtitles, you can find that you can choose English for the hearing impaired. You can choose French. You can choose Spanish or Espanol. And you can choose Portuguese. The whole thing about the different regions and whatnot. But yes, you can choose Portuguese from Brazil, right? Home of the 2016 Olympics, where people are swimming and shit. Excuse me, not and shit, swimming in shit. But that's just kind of weird to me, because as we'll see in comparison with the film Blu-ray, that is an amazingly limited set of options for the UK, for a release that's going to be in mainland Europe. For those two locations, that seems very paltry, especially given the fact that this is the, again, Latin American version of Spanish, not the European version of Spanish. On the main disc, right, the film disc, there's a much bigger difference here, uh, very much more like the DVD than like that bonus disc that's effectively identical. When you first turn on the Blu-ray, you have to choose a language to start with, and then you go from there to the menus, and among the menus, you can choose your languages for spoken language and for subtitles. When you put in the U.S. one, you have basically four options. You have English, you have English for the hearing impaired, French, and Spanish. And if you go to the language menu, you have the choice of English, 7.1 surround sound, of course, descriptive audio in 2.0, French, and Spanish. If you go to your subtitles, English for the hearing impaired, French, and Spanish. Note, no Portuguese anywhere to be found on the U.S. film disc. So it's there on the bonus disc, not so much on the film disc. So if you're from Brazil, enjoy the bonus features, screw you for the movie, apparently. For the U.K. Blu-ray, you pop it in, and there's already eight different options for languages that pop up. There are four spoken languages, as in the case with the U.S., and eight sets of subtitles. In the U.K., if you pop that disc in, you're going to be able to choose from, for spoken language, English 7.1, Descriptive Audio 2.0, French, and not Spanish, but Hindi. Then you move to subtitles, there's even more to choose from. You have, just like for the U.S. release, English for the Hearing Impaired, and French. No Spanish to be found anywhere, nor Portuguese, for that matter. The other languages included in subtitles for the U.K. are Arabic, Danish, Dutch, Finnish, Norwegian, and Swedish. Again, a much more diverse set of choices from a language standpoint, again, because this is going to the UK, 
and into many other countries in Europe. In this case, it's the difference between Region A and Region B. Not 1 and 2, that's a DVD classification, but A and B for Blu-rays. Region A, and yes, I'm going to have to look at a different computer for this because holy crap, there's a lot of them now. Uh, Region A is for America and its dependencies, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau, Japan, Korea, and Southeast Asia, except for those Asian countries included in Region C, which is Central Asia, Mainland China, Mongolia, South Asia, Belarus, Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Moldova, and the aforementioned region's dependencies, and then Region B, Africa, the Middle East, Southwest Asia, most of Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and their dependencies, excluding any of those in the aforementioned Region C. With a much broader region, as far as different languages are concerned, for Region B than for Region A. So that makes sense that we would have a lot of different language options, very different language options for the UK release. I find that pretty cool, and unlike DVD, most of, and Wikipedia says that some estimates say about 70% of, I have no idea how many, but a large amount of Blu-rays that are released, even though there is such a thing as region locking, don't do any region locking. They're basically regionless in all but name. The name telling you where it's from, but not necessarily locking you out from playing it. So you can actually get UK Blu-rays and play them in American players the vast majority of the time, including these Star Wars ones. So if you have someone in the United States whose first language isn't French, Spanish, or English, and maybe Portuguese, if they want to check out the special features on the bonus disc, and maybe their language is Hindi, Arabic, Danish, Dutch, Finnish, Norwegian, Swedish. They can actually just order a UK copy of the film, have it sent over here from like Amazon.co.uk or something, and watch the film with their native language, either spoken in the case of Hindi or as subtitles. Uh, that, I think, is a very cool approach to it, though I understand how companies sometimes get angsty about, you know, region locks and whatnot as they're trying to protect individual markets. From the standpoint of accessibility, though, it's awesome. And yes, I know, I hate the term accessibility when it comes to Star Wars comics and books, because that usually just means get rid of continuity and give us a story that's crap. But in this case, accessibility really is a good thing. So it's a mixed package for the UK. A bonus disc that's essentially the same as the US on Blu-ray, a DVD that's essentially the same as the US for DVD releases, but then a feature release that has some differences in terms of the languages that are involved. And you have different packaging and a different approach. No digital copies in the UK, digital copies pushed pretty heavily in the US, no combo packs in the UK, Combo packs being the only way to get it in the U.S. outside of DVD because you couldn't buy just a Blu-ray release of it. be interesting to see what happens later this year when The Force Awakens finally hits 3D Blu-ray as promised earlier in the year. We'll just have to see. Thank you again so much, Julian, for sending over those copies. That is fantastic. They'll be added to the library. And I hope that you and, of course, all the other viewers have enjoyed this comparative look at The Force Awakens on Blu-ray and DVD in the U.S. and the U.K. With that, we'll wrap up this episode. Thank you again to Julian, and thank you for watching. May the Force be with the home video viewers. The U.K. version, meanwhile, from a language standpoint, has Dolby 5.1 for English. English? Yes, yes, that's right. English. There's so many stereotypes there. Let's try this again, shall we?